Hello, welcome to another episode of Forgotten Cemeteries in the Pacific Northwest. Today we're in Elsie Cemetery, located in Elsie, Oregon, and our first Clatsop County visit, I believe. Alternative names of the cemetery, there's only one, Sunny Hill Cemetery of Nehalem, so let's go meet some of the local residents and hear their story. A little bit about the history of this cemetery, it was established in 1889, so a little late for our taste. There's 25 to 100 burials per the Oregon Burial Site Guide. We find a grave showing 164 memorials so far, so it's grown quite a bit. Still looks smaller than that though, walking around. It's kind of a tiny one. Um, this one's a bit of an odd cemetery, classified as being in the middle of nowhere, which it is, but being one of the loudest cemeteries around Oregon. And that's mainly due to the Highway 26 traffic, um, which is pretty close to this cemetery. It's like the main road you use to go out to the uh, coastal towns to visit. However, the cemetery is well taken care of by someone, as one of the reports written. Very light on the pioneer history, and I can only find two individuals of interest in this channel. Um, popular locations in this town include Camp 18 Restaurant and a logging museum, apparently. Um, I've been to Camp 18, and I grew up in Ohio. We're known for the most amazing breakfasts. Breakfasts? Is that a word? Um, around. I have to admit, Camp 18 gets it done, and I highly suggest you visit um, if you come to Oregon and you're headed out to the coast. Stop at Camp 18 for breakfast. You will not be disappointed. Today, not much sadly, but I think the tour will be fun because they have one of the most unique memorials we've seen to date on this channel, and that was during the opening, as you saw. It was a baby crib. We'll learn about a dark piece of history during the Yakima Indian Wars and visit one of the caretakers of the famous landmark in Astoria, Oregon, the Astor Column. Man, they weren't kidding. This, this cemetery is in the middle of nowhere. I feel very alone right now. It's just an eerie feeling. Anyway, <laughs> up ahead is Sergeant David Wilson. Born in 1830 in Dearborn County, Indiana, he was sergeant for the 2nd Oregon Mounted Volunteers during the uh, Yakima Indian Wars. And if you want a deep dive into how that war all started, feel free to watch my uh, Pearden Cemetery video on how Andrew Boland's murder sparked the entire war. I did read that six Oregon companies served in the Battle of the Walla Walla, which turned out to be the longest battle during the Yakima Indian Wars. This would result in U.S. Um, capturing several Indian chiefs and the leader of the Walla Walla, Yellowbird. However, another source says that Yellowbird uh, presented himself as a hostage when U.S. forces approached. It appears he wanted like a peaceful resolution to everything. During the first day of battle of the Battle of Walla Walla, Yellowbird would be killed by his captors, unfortunately, the Oregon Volunteers. To add, Yellowbird would be decapitated and scalped by one of the Volunteers. Alright, on to a more positive story, and apologies on the previous headstone profile. However, that's part of this channel to tell the pioneer history, and sometimes it's a bit dark, unfortunately. Here we have Daniel Refferson, I think is how you say his name, pioneer of the area and born in Norway in 1855. Uh, shows him being a seaman for the most part, leaving home at a very young age. Uh, he would never return home, thus never seeing his family again, from what I read. He married Elva E. Chappelle, who was buried at this cemetery as well. She was a school teacher, and uh, sadly, while giving birth, Elva died and so did the baby in 1901. Daniel, however, would never remarry. When he retired in 1917, he became the caretaker of the famous landmark in Astoria called the Astoria Column. Basically, it was a tower built in 1926 that commemorates the city's role in the Astor family business. It's kind of a neat visit and has these stairs inside out of the tower that you climb. Uh, it's pretty steep though, but it, it's a fun trip. You get a nice view of the bay and town. It also has some paintings of the significant events that took place in Oregon, such as the Lewis and Clark expedition, for example. Uh, but Daniel must have been uh, some farmer as people as far as Portland came to visit and view his farm. Apparently it was like the coolest thing ever. So that was kind of a neat little piece of history. Alrighty, time for the tour. And if you visit this cemetery and you're coming from Portland, be extremely careful pulling into the cemetery because it sneaks up on you and everyone's on your ass. I would suggest driving down the road just like another 30 seconds because there's a turnaround to the right. You turn around there and turn around so you could turn right into the cemetery. A lot safer than trying to turn left on a very busy highway. I think I'll just try to stay quiet during this tour, let you kind of soak in the, the silence of the cemetery, I guess you could call it. I think it's a good name for the, the video.
and this is the most visited memorial in the cemetery, I'd say. The most unique we've seen to date, not too often. See a baby crib memorial. Christy Marie Miller, 1966. That's pretty incredible, held up all, after all these years, huh? Quitting time. Sounds good to me. Right uh, unmarked ones here and there. No, nothing on them. Looks like they're written out in white out. There used to be a fence here. Guessing Mother Nature took care of it. That's it for the tour. Apologies, I could not find a whole lot of stories here. Not a whole, a whole pioneer ones, but unique sayings on headstones. Uh, unique memorial in that baby crib, huh? So, if you have any other recommendations for cemeteries to visit in Oregon or even southern Washington, feel free to comment below. Hope you enjoyed this one. It's a quiet one, a small one, but it is a fun one. Have a great day, and uh, thank you for watching.